Hello, so here we are in the lab looking to do some nonlinear optics. So what's our plan? What we're planning to do today is to focus very short pulses into a nonlinear crystal and look at how we can control the amount of second harmonic generation we get. First things first, let's turn on the laser. But we're going to be using a Pico train that generates uh, 10, uh, 1064 nanometer light with an optical parametric oscillator from uh, APE in Germany called the Levante. The OPO generates a beam at 832 nanometers. The Pico train has an output at 532 to pump the OPO, but we're going to be using the main beam at 1064 nanometer. So the beam at 832 coming out of the OPO goes through uh, a variable attenuator, a wave plate to adjust its polarization, a polarizing cube to adjust the power, uh, a telescope that will be uh, obvious later, two mirrors, and then it hits a dichroic with which it will recombine with the beam at 1064 by being reflected to the left. On the other hand, the 1064 nanometer beam comes out here, it is invisible. It hits the first mirror, then the second mirror. It goes through a wave plate, a half wave plate, and a cube just to adjust the power. And then it goes through a telescope. And then it hits this mirror that is on an adjustable uh, stage, so we can adjust the position and the delay. Then it is reflected to another mirror that sends it towards a dichroic mirror that lets through 1064 and will let it recombine with the 832 nanometer beam that's being reflected from the other side. So at this point we have two beams that are perfectly overlapped ideally and, uh, and then we're going to send them to just a few steering mirrors so that they can be sent to a final mirror that will that will send the beam to a lens and our crystal that we'll put here and towards the screen we'll put over there. The crystal we're going to be using is a BBO crystal mounted in a rotation mount to adjust the uh, angle. We set it right here uh, with a horizontal adjustment for uh, the phase matching angle and uh, right after this lens and the lens is a 75 millimeter lens that is focusing both beams into the nonlinear crystal in order to generate enough power for us to see a beam at the second harmonic. Now, the first thing we're going to do is use each beam independently. So we will use the 1064 nanometer beam to generate a second harmonic beam at 532. This beam looks green. And then we'll use the 832 beam to generate second harmonic at 416. This beam looks purple. You must understand that this should not happen. Usually a beam that propagates at, at a given wavelength will keep its wavelength. There's no reason for linear propagation in a crystal, in tissue, in anything to generate other frequencies. Propagation is linear. You start with a spectrum at 832. You keep your spectrum at 832. The crystal is specifically chosen to have a highly nonlinear response so that under appropriate illumination, appropriate orientation, appropriate polarization, it will generate new frequencies. So, with proper adjustment, we see that the beam at 1064 generates another beam at 532 nanometers. As soon as we change the angle a little bit, the beam disappears because the 1064 is not phase matched with the 532 anymore. However, we can keep rotating the crystal so that we are phase matched for 832 we get the doubling of the 832 nanometer beam into a 416 beam. Two things to notice. First of all, 416 is purple, 
and uh, we do not see the fundamental beam at 800 because the camera of my phone blocks infrared. Okay, let's go. This is highly sensitive to several parameters. For instance, if the crystal is not exactly at the focal spot of the lens, then the peak power is not high enough and we get very little second harmonic. We don't want to focus before the crystal or after the crystal, but really into the crystal to reach the maximum peak intensity necessary okay. for SHG. It also strongly depends on the input polarization. And as mentioned before, it strongly depends on the phase matching angle of the crystal. But then the really interesting part is to combine two different colors, 1064 and 832, through a phenomenon called some frequency generation, to generate yet another beam in the blue instead of purple at 466. This is more difficult because we need to have both beams at the same place in the crystal at the same time and therefore we need to adjust the delays so that both beams are there simultaneously. If the 1064 beam reaches the crystal after the 832 beam, nothing will come out. Similarly, if it reaches the crystal before, also nothing will happen. This is highly sensitive to the spatial overlap of the two beams in the crystal. As soon as the beams are not overlapped, there isn't any some frequency generation. So in summary, because we have these two beams spatially and temporally overlapped in our crystal, with the right phase matching angle, we can get second harmonic generation of the 1064 beam. By changing the angle of the crystal, we can phase match for the 832 beam that will generate a 416 beam. Finally, in between, with an angle in between, we can get the phase matching for some frequency of the 832 and 1064 beam that will give us a beam at 4, fix a 466. This 466 beam depends on the presence of both the 832 and the 1064. So, this was a lab experiment where we used the BBO, a special type of nonlinear crystal, to do second harmonic generation of two different beams, one at 832 that gave us 416 when appropriately phase matched, and one at 1064 that gave us 532, again, once it was properly phase matched at a different angle. But it is also possible to do some frequency generation where we take two beams at two different frequencies and mix them in this nonlinear crystal at a different phase matching angle so we can get another photon that has a frequency that is the sum of these two frequencies or the sum of their energy. I hope this was useful and insightful. Thank you.